Swifter, you are done building the You Are Awesome app. Let's set it up with its own app icon and install that app on your device. So your app is working really well. Now it's time to add an icon to the app and to install it on your iOS device. So if you have the app running in your simulator and then you go to the home screen with a shift command H, you'll notice the app has the generic icon, meaning that there isn't any icon. Well, let me show you a simple web service that will create an icon from any JPEG or PNG and then how you can install that in your app. Now, there are a lot of great resources online, including Apple's human interface guidelines that will give you background on how to design a good icon. Now, the purpose of this video isn't to show you how to design a good icon, it's to get one up and running quickly and easily. Now, there are a lot of tools online for creating an icon. One that I find that's fast and easy to use is Make App Icon. They're at makeappicon.com. They also have an inexpensive app you can download from the App Store, but the online service is free. Now you can drag any PNG, JPEG, or PSD file in here and create an app icon for it. So try to create a large image. They suggest here a 1536 by 1536 image. I'm just going to take a simple image that I'd created for the You Are Awesome app. That's the smiley face right here. And I'm going to click on Choose File select the image, the service will generate my icons, and I'll speed up the wait here. And after, oh, it should be less than a minute, you'll be asked a few more questions. You Are Awesome is the name of our app. What's the app category? Entertainment sounds good. Keywords. Oh, how about awesomeness is our keyword. And then it'll ask you your email address so that you can be emailed a zip file with these icons in it. I actually don't think any of the previous questions are important, especially since we're not submitting to the App Store. But you'll want to put a valid email in here so that you can get your file. You can subscribe if you'd like. I'm going to leave this clicked to include the Apple Watch icons. I'm going to click on the download button and it's actually not going to download, but it will send the email. And when you get the message to tweet out a thank you, you really should. This is a great free service. I've actually purchased their inexpensive app too. So I didn't need to go to the website because I've got the app for my desktop. But this is free. I wanted to show you that it's available. And of the services out there, I like this one because as you'll see in just a minute, it creates an app icon set folder that we can just use to replace the existing empty one in our app. Now almost immediately you'll receive an email from the service that includes a zip file that's got all of the icons that were created. I'm going to drag my zip file to the desktop, then double click the zip file to decompress it. That'll create this folder here that says you are awesome icon. Now double click this folder you are awesome icon and you see that the service creates a bunch of other folders with lots of icons for us. Now we only need the files inside of the iOS folder. So double click that and inside of that you'll see app icon dot app icon set. This is an exact replacement for an empty folder with this name that exists in your project's assets catalog. So before we copy this over, we're going to delete the existing empty folder inside of your asset catalog. So return to the You Are Awesome project, open up your assets catalog, highlight the existing app icon file that you see up top. And by the way, over here on the right, you see inside there are a bunch of empty placeholders for icons of various sizes. Well, in the folder that we're about to copy over, all of these will be filled in with resized versions of the You Are Awesome icon. So highlight this app icon name up here in the list, press the delete key, now it's gone. So we can return to our desktop, make sure that we've got this app icon dot app icon set folder, click and drag this right into your assets catalog. And now all of these variously sized icons are inside of your project. Build and run. Let's see this icon in action. In the simulator, we can shift command H to go home and we see our smiley sun. Nice. Your app now looks very official. Let's put it on your device. Now, in order to install the app on your device, you've got to plug your device into your Mac. Then under the window menu, select devices and simulators. If you've connected your device to your computer, you should see its name under the connected list on the left hand side. Make sure that you click the device's name. And since this is probably the first time that you've installed an app on this device, you're likely to see a message at the top stating the device is not paired with your computer. My wife had kindly lent me her iPhone so that I could show you this message because I've already got this app on my device. Now, when you open your device, open up your iPhone or your iPad or whatever you're using, you'll see a message to ask you to trust this computer, click trust. And after that, as long as your device has Wi-Fi turned on and it's on the same network as your Mac, you should be able to click connect to network. This will allow you to install and run new versions of this app on your device without having to physically plug it into your Mac. Now that's as long as your device and your Mac are both connected to the same Wi-Fi network. Now, for some reason, I was getting this password required message. My device wasn't asking me for a password, but I could just click connect to network after clicking OK, and it seemed to work. 
Now, there's one caveat. On my university, like many universities, we're part of the EduRome network. And I believe there's some sort of internal restriction, at least at, at my university with EduRome, where Macs can't install on wireless devices. Now, there's a chance that this has been corrected by the time you watch this video. But if you're running into a problem and you're on an institutional network instead of a home network, you might be limited to still needing to plug your device in with a physical cable each time you want to install and update your app. Now you'll also need to go through these same steps with each app you want to install on your device. And you can also install this app on the devices of friends and loved ones. Just use these same procedures. But unless you have a paid Apple account, that's that $99 account, these installations expire after seven days. Now you can go ahead and reinstall them after seven days, but if your app won't load after a week, this is likely what's going on. Now make sure that your device is open, it's unlocked. You may be asked to approve the installation of some additional software. So just pay attention to any prompts that might show up on your device. Also, if you want to hear any sound from the app, make sure that you don't have your phone muted. Even if your volume is turned up all the way, but you've still got your ringer mute, you won't hear the sound in this app. So make sure that that's turned on. Now that you're all set up, you can build and run on your device. So all you need to do is select the device's name under the scheme, then click on the play button to build and run. The first time you install an app on a device, you'll probably see this prompt that asks you to register the device. So go ahead and click on register device. And once again, if your device gives you additional prompts, make sure that you go through and fill all those out so that you approve it. And while you're connected, you can actually use the debugger in Xcode. The Xcode debugger is now actually connected in real time to the app that's running on your device. Now, this is super useful if you want to do any kind of on-device testing, especially if you're doing things like shake detection or using the accelerometer. And if you look at your phone, you'll see the app icon appear. You don't need to double click this. Just wait a little while and Xcode will automatically launch the app on your device. Then once it does launch, you can click on the show message button a few times and try it out. And that sounds great. Congratulations, you built your first app. You've learned a ton about Swift programming, about iOS development. You can bask in the admiration that your app now bestows on you. You'll be building many more great apps in this series, but take time to celebrate your accomplishment. I'm proud of you. Remember, if you tweet a photo or screenshot of your work with the hashtag iOS Code Crush, you may be selected to receive one of the super cool stickers that we give away weekly. What a great way to celebrate your app building skills to tell the world that your Mac builds apps. Keep at it, Swifter. Great job.